UFC Vegas 27, a.k.a. UFC Fight Night. We have Rob Font versus Cody Garbrandt. Welcome to another UFC prediction and analysis video. We go by the name of Boxing MMA Picks. He goes by the name of Zahn. I go by the name of Harris. And here at Boxing MMA Picks, we are giving you our fight-by-fight fight analysis for every each and every UFC card that comes out on a week-over-week -week basis, letting you know from a betting perspective which fights are worth it, which fights do you want to avoid, perhaps which underdogs you want to take a look at, and hey, even if you stick around to the end of the video, you might get a little bit of parlay action. I definitely appreciate you, you guys subscribing to the channel sharing this video with anyone that you know that needs that additional analysis in making their picks. And our goal is to make you some money. So we're gonna get right into it. We have 13 fights on this UFC Vegas 27 card. Pretty solid main event, as I mentioned, in Rob Font versus Cody Garbrandt. But in our usual fashion, we are going to start with the prelims. We have seven fights on our prelims. Let's get right into fight number one. We have Rafael Alves versus Demir Ismagulov. I'll start this one out as usual. Taking a look at uh, Demir Ismagulov, he's on a 17 fight win streak, Night record is 19 and two. Um, and that's not essentially a record of fluff. I mean, he is three and zero in the UFC as well. Three quality wins at that. He beat Tiago Moise, uh, Tiago Moises, who was 12 and three. Joel Alvarez was 15 and one. And Alex Gorgis, who was seven and zero at the time. So pretty solid wins already in the UFC on his resume. Pretty sound on the feet, you know, good hands, pretty patient striker. He looks for his spots. If you watch his fight versus Thiago Moises, he dropped him with the first clean punch that he landed. So, you know, definitely has some pop. That happened in the first round. Definitely has some pop that you want to be concerned with. He's a heavy favorite on this one. In a lot of ways, I can see why. Uh, in a lot of ways as well, I probably don't want to throw him on every single parlay. But again, taking a look at Demir Ismagula, pretty fluid style of stand-up. Punches, kicks, long reach. Uh, we see here he'll only have a two-inch reach advantage, but definitely fights like the taller fighter. And uh, I mean, this fight won't go to the ground at all, but in case it does, um, he has pretty good takedown defense from what I've seen as well. Taking a look at Rafael Alves, on the other hand, I mean, he was supposed to debut versus Pat Sabatini back in February, um, but that fight fizzled out. Um, so here he is today. He does have power. You know, he stalks you down. He can switch stance. I like his kicks. Um, you know, throws a lot into them. I like his boxing as well. It's pretty solid. Uh, and stays pretty composed. You know, stays pretty technical, yet he's pretty explosive. Um, should this get into any sort of grappling situation, of course, we know that he has the accolades there. You know, a pretty strong guillotine. Um, you know, it kind of comes from nowhere. It's a tight one as well. So that could be something that may present itself in this fight. What's interesting to note is that this fight was at this fight is, I should say, at lightweight, 155 pounds. Whereas Rafael Alves, you look at his Dana White Contender Series win, and that took place at 145. I mean, he did fill out the weight class, of course, but that size could still make a difference, moving 10 pounds up. And Alves, I mean, I think the biggest knock against Alves from what I've seen, um, you know, very dangerous early in the fight, and I think that's fair to say, but. His cardio. I, I can't really rely on the cardio, can't really trust the cardio. I think uh, Ismagulov will be able to sort of manage distance effectively, sort of stay out of the danger zone in the first two and a half, three, maybe four minutes of that fight. And then as the fight picks up and goes on, um, you know, he should be the more precise striker in this one. So I'm going to go with Demir Ismagulov. I will say, you know, I typically analyze fights before looking at the odds. Um, when I was analyzing this fight, I was in favor of Ismagulov, but I was more so in favor from a minus 200 type of perspective. So when I see minus 575, I do get a little concerned. Um, but nonetheless, Demir Ismagulov, he's my pick. Yeah, man, these odds are these odds are crazy. Like, these are some ridiculous odds. Uh, Demir Ismagulov, he's a, a Russian fighter. He, he can do everything. He can wrestle. He can hold you on the ground. Uh, he's but in the UFC he's shown um, more of his strike, but he does have the uh, the grappling accolades to to back it up if he needs it. Uh, in this fight, the reason I don't I don't agree with the odds is um, Rafael Alves. Even though he's nineteen and nine, he hasn't lost a fight since uh, twenty sixteen. 
So he definitely turned a corner. Um, in 2016, his record was 14 wins, nine losses. Now he's 19 and nine. So he hasn't lost a fight since then. Um, he's looking good lately. Like he, uh, he's an explosive fighter. If, if he touches you, he could finish the fight. Like he has that, that style that if he does hurt you at any point, he can definitely finish the fight. So he's a, he's a solid competitor. He work, he, um, he trains out at MMA masters. If you don't know, that's uh Colby, uh, Covington's gym. Uh, is there uh, Cesar Ferreira, Ricardo Lamas, uh, Josh Seaman? So there's a lot of ex- there's a lot of experience um, in 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 in, in that in, in that gym. So yeah, this is this is this is a tough fight. I'm I'm gonna go with Demir Ismagulov, but those odds are ridiculous because he could lose this fight. Rafael Alves, even though he's 19 and nine, hasn't lost since 2016. He beat a fighter that was 17 and two. Before that, beat a fighter 17 and four. Uh, before that, would beat a fighter that was 14 and two. Before that, beat a fighter that was 16 and five. So he has a shot here, but I have to make a pick on the channel. Now, betting wise, I'm, I'm definitely not putting this on my parlays. I'm not putting it on any of my parlays, but I'm going to go with Demir Ismagulov. He seems a bit, he seems more well rounded. Um, he knows what he's doing here, and he, and and yet he, he has the option to to utilize his grappling, get this to the ground, and and he's 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 out of fighter gym, so he has some good training partners there as well. I just think he's the more well-rounded guy, and I think that he has the better striking, aside from getting uh, aside from getting like a uh, aside from getting hurt in the fight, and then he gets finished. He should win every round in this fight. So I'm gonna go Demir Ismagula to win this fight. But again, this, this is danger because he's fighting a guy that is explosive. And if he touches you, he could finish the fight. So you got to be careful when you, um, when you see odds like that, again, like Harris said, if this was plus 200, I'm all over it, but at these odds, it's not worth it. Yeah. Pretty good fight. Nonetheless, pick off the card. Let's move on to fight. Number two, we have Yancey Medeiros versus Demir Hatsevich. a pretty solid fight to, to, to follow up that first one, taking a look at Yancey Medeiros, uh, I mean, he's been a, a you know a bit inactive. His last fight was a loss in February 2020. That was to Lando Venata. Before that, a January 2019 loss to Gregor Gillespie, and then prior to that, a um, February 2018 loss to Cowboy Cerrone. So he's been relatively inactive. Um, you know, definitely looking to get back in there. I mean, we know Yancy Medeiros to be a pretty solid striker. Um, right. He's trained for a long time with the Diaz brothers. I know he trains with a Max Holloway as well, or at least he has at one point um, from a, from a striking standpoint, he's a switch dance fighter, you know, more of an accumulation style of striker, almost like the Diaz brothers from that perspective. And uh, you know, I mean, he, he had problems in his fight versus Gregor Gillespie, who we know of course is a fighter that's going to force the ground action on him um, with, with, with smothering wrestling. But I don't really see that presenting itself in this fight. But nonetheless, you know, he doesn't really fare too well against those aggressive wrestlers. And I look at Hatsevich on the other hand, I mean, just his time in the UFC in general, you see his record there at 13 and six, two guys who are relatively inconsistent in, in some ways. But Demir Hatsevich, he's three and four in the UFC, right? So it's not like he started cold 0 and 2 and he's out the, and he's out the promotion. I mean, seven fights in he's still under 500. It, 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 it kind of screams Randall Marcos in some ways. Um, he is more of a striker, though, you know, patient striker, not the most active striker. We see his striking rate there at 2.99, significant strikes landed per minute. Um, you know, he'll march you down, but he won't really accompany that with active striking. Um, pretty big striker, though, right? You know, clean hooks to have a bit of meat behind them. Absolutely no takedown defense with him either, but again, I don't see either fighter taking these, um, th- this to the ground here at all. Um, you know, uh, I think, you know, style of fight. I think style of fight in some ways, this is the kind of fight that Yancey Medeiros is looking for. You know, the type of fight that's going to stay on the feet, the type of fight where his opponent won't necessarily overwhelm him um, either with pressure or with activity. And I think as a result of that, I think Medeiros, I'm expecting him at the very least to be the smarter striker here. Um, I, I also think he'll be the slightly more active striker in this fight as well. Um, you know, can't really confidently lean on either side in this, but especially at underdog odds there, 
I'm leaning uh, with, with Yancy Medeiros on this one. I think he'll just be a little smarter in there. Yeah, for me, this is a really hard fight. Man. This, the, these are two guys you really can't put faith in on either side. Um, Yancey might have the better boxing. He might not. I, I don't know. And these guys haven't fought in so long that uh, you're not sure where they're at today, right? So um, this is a coin flip fight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Demir Hatsovic. I'm only going to pick him because I believe that Medeiros can get, can get knocked out. I, I don't trust his chin that much. Um, yeah, he can get knocked out, right? So that's what I'm worried about is, is his chin. I think that they're both going to be striking. They're both going to be hitting each other. But I'm just not sure if uh, Yancey can take it as Demir can. In my opinion, though, Medeiros has, should have the better striking, in my opinion, with the, with, with, with the longer arms, the boxing, that Nick Diaz style uh, you, you mentioned. Um, but I, I just, for some reason, feel that he can't take the shots that well. And I think Hadzovic, I think he could even use some takedowns. I think he can, like, figure out, get this fight to the ground here. And because I think he's going to be the stronger guy, that if they were to clinch, and if he were to get a body lock or a double leg, I think he would be able to get a takedown in this fight. And he can do what Giagos did to him, right? So... I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Hatsovic. I'm gonna go with Hatsovic here. It's a close fight that can go either way. Uh, I don't want no part of it as far as betting goes, um, but I'm gonna pick Hatsovic for the channel. I'm not mad at that pick at all, and and that kind of just speaks to what kind of fight we're looking at in fight number two. Probably want to stay away um, from a betting perspective, as as Zan mentioned there. Fight number three, we have Josh Kulabau versus Sha Yi Lan. How do you how do you feel about this one? Okay, this is, um, a, this, is a, this is a good fight, but obviously it's a tough fight because we're not really sure what level uh, the newcomer is at. Now, we know Caleb Kulabau is a, is a decent fighter. Uh, he looked good in that his last fight. Uh, literally could have went either way. Um, in this fight, though, I just think that his opponent here, um, Yilan Shaw, stocky guy. I think that if he were to get in, get some takedowns, he can make the fight interesting. But I just think that Koulibaly is going to have the rent, the the length here. Uh, I think he has the better boxing, the better stand up, uh, the better kicks, the more active striker. Um, I just think he's going to build a piece of Elan Shaw. But yeah, Elan Shaw, I'm, not, I'm just not sure where he's at. I know he's definitely a stocky guy, strong guy. Uh, definitely has power. He can definitely uh, pick up Koulibaly, take him down. Um, but I'm going to bank on UFC being a different level. And I just think Koulibaly, he has shown us a bit here um, in, in his brief uh, time in the UFC versus Jalen Turner. That's a tough fight. And then obviously his draw versus Charles Jourdain. That could have went either way, but uh, forget that. But I'm going to go with Joshua Koulibaly. I just believe that he, he's the better fighter here. I think he has more ways to win. So I'm going to go Koulibaly. Yeah, I'll keep this really short. I, I completely agree. I think Koulibaly has more to offer in this matchup. Um, you know, pretty solid stand-up out of him. That that Jordan fight showed me a lot because it was a pretty back-and-forth fight. Um, and it showed that he can hang around. And, and of course, Jordan, not to say he's a, he's a top-level guy, but he is one of those guys that are going to kind of sit in the top 20, maybe even top 15, and, and, and kind of prove to be a challenge, especially for, you know, I, I think at the time it was the second fight in the UFC. So, you know, Josh Kulabau, I just expect more from him. You know, Shah Yilan, on the other hand, like you said, you know, I'm obviously not going to compare him to Michael Chandler, but he is that kind of shorter, stockier, um, you know, stand-up looks okay, but they're going to depend on the wrestling in terms of, you know, scoring points, in terms of trying to get some ground and pound, things like that. Um, but again, I just th I think Josh Kulabau has more to offer, especially at this level. Um, I'm not too mad at the minus 260. I wish that was maybe minus 210 I, I would even be okay with. Um, obviously, less than that would have been would have been amazing as well. but Josh Kulabau is my pick, minus 260. Might consider that on some parlay action. I'm going to see how the remainder of the week plays out, see what they look like in weigh-in, see what they look like standing next to each other, and, and sort of decide how confident I am in that. But Josh Kulabau is my pick as well. So we're going to move on to fight number four. We have Bruno Silva versus Victor Rodriguez. Now, this one, I do like Bruno Silva here. We see he's a big favorite at minus 330. Um, you know, taking a look at Bruno Silva, he's coming off of a pretty good win versus uh, J.P. Bays two months ago. And, of course, that was a fight where I think the both of us, I'll definitely say myself, 
I thought J.P. Bays was going to win that fight. You know, on paper, it looked like he should have. And Bruno Silva, you know, really impressed me in that fight. Um, you know, good movement. He fights from the outside. He'll, he'll go for that calf kick a lot. Um, pretty quick and sharp with his stand-up, quick hands. Um, of course, mentioned the kicks already. Good scrambling ability as well. You know, should this get to the ground, good ability to get up when he's taken down. Um, he can land that takedown on his own, uh, of his own, I should say, when needed. See a pretty solid average there of almost one takedown per round, just under three per fight. Um, you know, he looked very good on top versus JP Bays. So I can, I can trust this top game and, and feel pretty good about it. Um, you know, again, his last fight versus uh, JP Bays, we mentioned it at that time, and I think it applies here as well. You know, Silva, in my opinion, has faced the better competition. You go back to his LFA days in 2017, he had a draw versus Casey Kenny, somebody who's uh, towards the top of the division. So we know from a talent level, he's there. You know, again, when, 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 when in our analysis, JP Bays looks like the potentially better fighter, Bruno Silva showed why that wasn't the case. Um, so when I'm looking at Victor Rodriguez, you know, he's coming off of a bad loss via head kick to Adrian Yanez. Um, that was October 2020. So it's always a question of how does he feel after that? That was his UFC debut at that. Um, so that could be a confidence killer. That could make him hungrier. You never really know. From a stand-up style, he presents sort of a Muay Thai stand-up style. Um, you know, both hands and feet coming in his striking. Comes forward, he pressures you. You know, looks to press you against the cage right away in clinch situations. All of his wins are by KO. I know he's only seven and three, but all of them are by KO. So definitely has uh, heavy hands. But when you look at those three losses, two of those three, at the very least, are, are by KO as well. So he's almost a knockout or get knocked out type of fighter. You almost want to take a look at what uh, betting this fight inside the distance will pay you. There might, that might be the actual bet when it comes to this one. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, I, I, I do like Bruno Silva in this one for all the reasons that I mentioned. Um, I think he's just going to be quicker, sharper. Um, I think he has a little bit more to offer. That, uh, that ground game could be a potential path for him as well. He might even get the finish. So uh, I'm not, I'm not going to bet on a finish, but I will potentially bet on Bruno Silva in this one. Yeah, this one's going to be easy for me. I like Bruno Silva. Um, I just think that when it, when it comes to this fight here, he's going to be the one that's going to have the better stand-up. Uh, he's going to have the, the, the far better stand-up in this fight here. And his opponent here, obviously, I think has, has good wrestling. I think he has good wrestling. But I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure he's going to be able to... Um, I'm not sure Victor Rodriguez is going to be able to get this fight to the ground. Because Bruno Silva can move around the ring really well. And, and I think he's just going to be able to pot shot him here. And yeah, he, he definitely has a far better competition. Victor Rodriguez hasn't fought in anybody. Uh, anybody. So Bruno should win this fight here. He should definitely uh, win this fight. Uh, yeah, this should be an easy fight for Bruno here. His stand-up is far better than Victor. And he moves around. He's going to be able to avoid the grappling like he did with J.P. Bates. And he even got, I believe he got JP on the ground, I'm not, if I remember correctly. He did. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go with him. I'm going to go with Bruno Silva here. He's, he's, the, he's definitely the better fighter here. He's fought the better guys. And if things get sticky, like in his fight versus, versus uh, what's his name, uh, Taha, Khaled Taha, uh, he still came back. He's, he's, he's shown hard. He fought back. He fought a bigger guy. I think that was a short notice fight for him. So he definitely has the heart factor. And uh, yeah, I like him in this spot. So I'm going to go Bruno. Yep. I'm pretty confident he gets that done. Yeah, I'm going to agree with the confidence. I think he's actually one of, my, one of my more confident picks, at least on this prelim card. So in that case, let's move on to fight number five. From one Silva to the next, we have Claudio Silva taking on Court McGee. How do you feel about this? Man, I'm all on... Um, I know Claudio Silva's old. I know that. But I'm, I'm all on Claudio Silva here. I, I just believe he's the, he's the better guy. Um, Again, we don't know what we're getting when, when, they, when they come to the ring. It's just court. When he fought, um, what was that guy's name? Carlos Condit. He really let me down in that fight. Now, I know Carlos Condit is a completely different fight from uh, Claudio Silva. Um, but court really uh, let me down in that fight here. And, and Claudio Silva has only been fighting top guys, right? So I think now this is a step down as far as competition goes. I know, I know he's an older guy. Uh, but I just think in this fight, 
Uh, he's going to be able to get this fight into the clinch. He only has two losses. Remember that. I think he's going to be able to get this fight into the clinch, get this fight on the ground. And his, his ground game is on a different level than a lot of the guys in, in the division. He's only lost to James Krause. He's only lost to um, his first fight back in 2007. Matt My concern is he's 38. He's 38. He beat Leon Edwards, Nordin Taleb, Danny Roberts. So these, he's beating guys that can't hang with him on the ground in a sense, right? So I don't think Court can hang with him, even though he's 38 here. How old is Court here? Let me check. Say, uh, pretty much same age. Court is 30. Oh, 36? Yeah, 30, they're both old. So I'm, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm gonna go with um, Claudio Silva here, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he gets this done. Yeah, I, I feel the same way in a lot of ways. My pick is also Claudio Silva. Uh, I mean, you know, and, and just to provide a little bit of ad additional analysis on this, taking a look at his stand-up, you know, he's a southpaw, pretty heavy on the feet, not the best movement, not the best footwork, um, but he does throw a lot into his strikes. And, and with somebody like Court McGee, who, you know, is going to want to engage in, in a lot of ways, he might, get, he might get clipped, right? He might get clipped like the way we saw in his last fight right at the end of round one versus Carlos Condit. But obviously, we know what Claudio Silva, he's a grappler, right? BJJ is, is his strength. Um, you know, if he gets you on the ground, he's really dangerous on there. Court McGee, on the other hand, um, you know, he's 3-7 and seven in his last 10 fights. Um, you know, of course, he lost his last fight versus Carlos Condit. Definitely disappointed me in that fight as well. And, and to your point, Claudio Silva has beaten guys that have much better stand-up than Court McGee, right? Yeah, Court McGee's stand-up is pretty basic. Nothing specific to highlight. Um, you know, he, he did throw a good amount of calf kicks and, and straights to the body in his last fight, so maybe that's something he's incorporating. But, you know, again, I mean, outside of Claudio Silva's potential cardio tank, which I've seen fade at times, I do expect him to just simply be the better fighter here. And I do expect him to get the job done. Claudio Silva is also going to be my pick. Let's move on to another fight here, fight number six on our prelims. We have Big Ben Rothwell versus Chris Barnett. I will admit, I'm a little excited for this one. Chris Barnett is my guy. Um, UFC debut for the Beast Boy. How do you feel? Man, I think Chris Barnett, um, he has to knock him out in that first round. After that, I think Ben's going to cruise on in this fight. Ben's my pick here. I don't think, um, I don't think Chris fought that, that, that good of guys. or he's, I don't think he's won against any good guys here. Uh, looking at his record, so there's not much um, I can put on that, but he does have the power to put a, put, put anyone's lights out. He's five foot nine. He's going to be the much smaller guy against um, uh, Big Ben. So I, I like Ben in this spot. This this looks like it's an easy fight for Ben. Uh, he has a really good chin, so if he can just survive that power, this should be an easy one. Yeah, and that's the funny thing. Ben should get this done um, based on how this matchup presents itself, right? I mean, he's a bigger guy. He has the chin. He has the ability to continue marching you down. And, you know, he, he presents some problems, of course, for, for a lot of fighters who can't put him away, especially for fighters who try to put him away in that first round. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what we get from Chris Barnett in his UFC debut, right? I mean, he, he's kind of had some, you know, for lack of a better word, viral moments in some ways. You know, a big, heavier guy. He's short, stocky, big. He's throwing spin kicks, jumping kicks. He's doing backflips after he wins. Um, you know, very athletic for his size. Moves very well. He's a pretty good athlete. Um, again, he moves surprisingly well for his size. Um, his stance says orthodox there, but I've seen him do a lot of southpaw. Uh, good low kicks as well. I've seen him wrestle. Um, he might even have some ability to grapple. I'm not saying he competed well, but he did have a competition versus Yuel Romero in a grappling bout. Um, not too long ago so at least confident enough to to participate in a grappling match but again with Chris Barnett a lot of these things that I almost jokingly like about him they probably won't be factors in this Ben Rothwell fight because again you know unless you can knock Ben Rothwell out he's gonna put that pressure on you and 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 he's gonna you know just just do what he has to do um I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shot on this though I'm gonna take an underdog shot this is, I'm going to admit, this is a biased pick. I'm definitely not betting on this whatsoever. I just want the biased pick for the channel. I'm going with Chris Barnett. I'm going with the flashy beast boy. And let's see if uh, UFC can build a little bit of hype around him. But 
Realistically speaking, Ben Rothwell probably gets it done. For the sake of a pick, though, I'm going with the underdog. I'm going with Chris Barnett. So let's go to the final fight of our prelims. We have a pretty hard one to call here. Ricardo Hamos versus Bill Algio. Um, this fight was supposed to happen last month in April. Very tough fight to call. I mean, you look at Ricardo Ramos. He lost his last fight versus an undefeated Lerone Murphy at the time. Really good overall fighter. I mean, good flow in his stand-up, a leg-heavy attack, good feints, good hands, um, good wrestling, good jiu-jitsu. Again, just one of those fighters who kind of can do it all. Um, and, and, you know, he's one of those fighters who always seems to be facing good competition, and yet he's still only 25 years old. Um, so it definitely has a long way to go in the UFC and still has the ability to get a lot better, even fight over fight at this point. Um, Bill Algio, on the other hand, I mean, he's a long fighter, you know, long kicks. We see he has a, a four-inch height advantage, uh, only one inch on the reach, but definitely fights like a tall fighter, especially with those tall, long kicks that he has. Uh, pretty relaxed in the stand-up. He does switch stance quite often. Throws combination with both hands and feet. He has a bit of a leg-heavy attack in his own right. Um, so this is pretty good matchmaking by the UFC. And, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm curious to see how this one goes. Uh, decent clinch and, and, and some takedown defense on his end. But I will say, you know, Ricardo Ramos, I think, is maybe the more skilled fighter. Despite either fighter sort of having a shot here, I think Ricardo Ramos is the more skilled fighter. And I also think Ricardo Ramos has, again, taken on the better competition. So relatively speaking, it is somewhat of a step down for Ramos. It is somewhat of a step up for Bill Algio. And I mean, just based on the skill, I'm going to go with Ricardo Ramos. But I will say, I do feel anything can happen in this fight. Yeah, I'm all over Algio in this fight. All over Algio. I like him in this spot. Uh, tough guy. Hard to knock out. Uh, Ramos, we know, slows down. So this likely is going to go to a decision. Ramos needs to get a knockout or a, or a submission, in my opinion. Um, I'm not sure he's going to be able to win a decision versus Algio uh, over three rounds, but you never know, right? So every, every card, uh, any, anything can happen, but I believe Algio is going to like pick it up at, after the second, the third round. I think that he's just going to outstrike him, have the better cardio, the better gas tank, uh, the better heart. I just like Algio here. I think he's going to win this fight here. Yeah, not, not mad at either pick there. And again, I think you brought up uh, two really important points, the cardio and the heart. I mean, Algio, I can definitely see, you know, packing up the points as the fight goes on. It's just a question of what happens in that first seven and a half minutes. You know, what happens in the first half of the fight? Does Ramos win round one? Does Ramos do enough to win round two? Or does Ramos win round one? Algio wins two and three. Um, or does Algio win all three or does Ramos win all three? I mean, uh, in a lot of ways, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. And I'm not mad at that one being a, a bit of a split in terms of the direction that we're going in. Why don't we take it to Vegas in that point, see where we can make some people some money. Let's start with an underdog pick. Um, which underdog are you potentially feeling on this? Mm, underdog wise. I don't think I picked an underdog, did I? I don't think so. Let's take a look here. Uh, I mean, Claudio Silva is a pick em. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that. You got to go with that one. Got to go with that. I'm not mad at that at all. Um, got to go with that. In terms of my underdog picks, I have a couple of them. So I did mention uh, Ricardo Ramos. Uh, I think he has a shot there. Again, um, despite the heart, despite the cardio, I think he's the more skilled fighter. Um, so let's see how that skill plays into effect while he's still fresh uh, and before he gets hit. Um, and then another underdog pick I like is Yancy Medeiros. I, I just don't see Demir Hadzovic, you know, implementing an advantageous style. I think this one stays on the feet, and I think Yancy Medeiros is in the type of fight where he can win it. Um, plus 100, not mad at those odds there. Why don't we get off the underdogs? Uh, favorite pick or, or favorite one or two pick? What, what pick are you considering betting on on this prelim? Okay, on the prelim, I'm looking at... Okay. I'm looking at Claudio Silva. And I'm looking at um, Kulabel. No, sorry. Sorry. Bruno Silva. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty much going to echo the exact same picks. I'm not going to add Claudio Silva in there for myself. Um, so I'll just provide sort of one favorite pick as uh, Bruno Silva in this one. I, I really like his chances here. Minus 275 is not too steep. Um, so I think he gets the job done. Um, but not mad at that. You know, some pretty solid picks. As usual, we would definitely appreciate all of that algorithmic stuff. You know, subscribe to the channel at Boxing MMA Picks. Press like on this video, comments in the comments. We love having conversations about, you know, uh, what, what insights you guys have on certain fights or certain parlays that you may be considering. If you want additional sort of insight from us in terms of how we feel about your parlay, let that all be known in the comments. You definitely want to uh, turn the notifications on as well. Don't want to miss when our videos drop. Let's get that analysis going right away. And, and you can sort of use that to start dissecting down the breaking down these fights and coming to a conclusion of your own but you know what we got our main card coming up next this is the end of the prelim video ufc vegas 27 aka ufc fight night rob font versus cody garbrandt he goes by the name of zan i go by the name of harris we go by the name of boxing mma picks let's get this money let's do it